Today, we've got ourselves another yeast shootout between the Lauvin K1 V116 yeast and the Red Star Premier Rouge yeast. So let's get started. Hey, this is Man Made Mead. I've got another yeast shootout for us to uh, go through today. It's between these two yeasts, the Lauvin um, K1 V116, a yeast that I use quite a bit, and the Red Star Premier Rouge yeast. Now, I will give you some stats about each one here in a moment, but I want to describe and tell you how this works. We are um, kind of going through a, uh, we're doing this Wild West style, meaning that they are going to be fermenting at the same temperature and with the same amount of ingredients, or same amount of uh, yeast nutrient and those various things. Um, I understand, and I'll talk about that here in a moment, that each yeast requires different things. However, um, it's Wild West. We're in the Wild West right now. So, uh, here is the mead recipe we're using. Both of these meads have the same amount of, you know, stuff in them. Currently, uh, there is about half a gallon of water, and I put one point, it was seven pounds of uh, orange blossom honey into this and then two grams of yeast for each one. They are both currently setting at a gravity of 1.100, meaning that they can go up to 13.125% at max. Let me give you some yeast stats. So the K1 V116 can go up to 18%. It is a very high uh, gravity fermenter. It is great for restarting yeast, uh, sorry, great for restarting fermentations if you get stuck in a situation. It is a fast fermenter and it has a temperature range of 50 to 90 degrees um, Fahrenheit. And then one thing that I know quite a bit about this is that the K1 V116 actually holds fruit aromas a little better than um, some other yeasts. Now the Red Star Premier Rouge uh, is a six, or has a tolerance of 16%. It is great for fruit flavors, just like the K1 V1. And it is a, it is a medium fermenter speed fermenter has a temperature range of 64 to 86. I'm going to be fermenting these at about 68-ish degrees, so not outside of their fermentation realm. And I'll be using a uh, score sheet at the very end of this to kind of give them scores for different aspects. And I'll show it up here. It has things like flavor, it has um, things like finish, various other aspects totaling up to about 70 points. And we'll get there in the end. But again, fermenting at the same um, temperature. I am gonna put one uh, teaspoon of nutrient, yeast nutrient and yeast energizer into these meads because I want to um, make sure it's fair. I know that not every yeast needs nutrients. And uh, again, sorry, we're talking Wild West rules. So uh, if you wanna know all of the rules in more depth, go check out the link below for the rules video there. But I have rehydrated um, both of them, and they've been doing this for about 15 minutes, rehydrated them according to what they needed, and I'm gonna go ahead and pour them in. This is the Rouge. I'm gonna go right in there. And I am doing this in these full gallons for right now because um, it's actually, these, these total a little over a half gallon, which is exactly what I need because in the future I will be putting them into this little yeast colony needs to get out. There we go. Um, I will be putting them into these half gallon jars. And if you know anything about fermenting, you have sediment. Um, I've learned from my previous yeast shootouts that I need to start a little bigger so they fit into here. So uh, here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna put my corks and my airlocks onto these, label them. I will give you some updates on fermentation as it goes and we will see who wins um, the shootout in the end. So let the shootout begin. Okay, here's an update on both the K1 V1 and the Rouge. So they're both fermenting. As you can see, um, they're going. I have put the half teaspoon of nutri uh, nutrient and energizer in, and they're doing good. You can kind of see, maybe. Got bubbling on this one, of course. And we got some bubble in there. Um, both are fermenting. We're gonna let them keep going. This is about 48 hours in. All right, so as far as the K1 V1 and the Rogue are concerned, you can see that they are two very different colors, and there's something really interesting about this to me. This is the Rogue, or Rouge, excuse me, not Rogue, Rouge, and uh, K1 V1. So the K1 V1 is much clearer, but it is not fully fermented. It is at 1.010 after six days of fermentation. 
and the rouge is actually drier and it is more hazy. It is at 1.005 after six days of fermentation. So I find that really interesting. Um, I don't, I'm hoping this will finish out. The K1B1 should be able to chew through the 1.1, you know, amount of gravity that we put in. Same thing for the, uh, the rouge. So we'll see uh, what happens. I'm gonna wait a couple days and then do a taste test. Okay, so we're done fermenting. Um, within this yeast shootout, at least I'm fairly certain. If you take a look at these two, they are both pretty pretty clear. Um, and I do want to note one thing. You can see this is the Rouge, Red Star Rouge. It has a much, I would say higher volume maybe of yeast. Um, actually, well, the yeast have acted differently, I should say. So this one, the yeast are kind of collected here at the bottom, like this, and then of course at the bottom of the uh, K1V1, but they're more of a cake at the bottom. I'll be taking a gravity reading here in a moment, but I'm fairly certain they're done um, fermenting because I double checked their gravities about four days ago, and they were almost done, so pretty sure they're, almost, they're done. So let's get a taste test of them as they are. I'll take a gravity reading. I didn't want to do the gravity reading first because that will um, stir up the, the mead, and I didn't want to mess with the clarity. Okay, so I finished doing my judging portion. I want to go ahead and taste test and kind of tell you some things that I notice, and then I'll get more specifically into my score sheet. So I'm going to go ahead and taste test um, the Rouge first. One thing about this, it is definitely a little hazier, you can see from the carboy. Um, it, it has a, a uh, more tannic body to it and I think that's partially because it is I mean I, I firmly believe these are done fermenting it's got some residual sweetness got a little bit more of a tannic feel so I'm not as big of a fan in that regard of the mouthfeel but it's not very smooth or not as smooth I should say it still has a retention of that honey character um, but it is it is definitely clouded by uh, uh, some yeasty esque ish taste and um, one thing I, I find about this one that's interesting is there's almost a slight smokiness to it, like the smallest bit. So it's not bad. The aroma on it's pretty good. Um, it's, it smells smooth. You get that honey character, the really earthy floral smell from it. Uh, it's, it's good. It's definitely, um, I mean, it's got its flaws. So does the K1V1. Now I'm gonna taste test the K1V1. So this thing has a different mouthfeel. It's got more, it's more smooth for one, but the, the honey character I think has retained itself a little better. It's a little bit, not necessarily sweet, but you get the, the warmth of the honey as well as the, um, the floralness of that honey. The orange blossom really kind of pops out uh, and you really do get kind of a, uh, a apple-y, pineapple-y, like tropical, in my opinion, taste. Some orange, but m less orange, more tropical. It has a great honey um, smell to it as well. What's interesting about this to me, both of these fermented for the same amount of time. It has been uh, 11 days since I started them. Obviously, they're different colors, different clarities. Uh, the K1V1 clearly did ferment a little faster, but not too much faster than the Rouge, and uh, we ended up with this. So, uh, now, let me get into, before I decide, tell you what, what's happening, I'll show a picture of these two sheets on the screen, but what I, what I do want to share with you is that uh, these meads were pretty close in some regards. I'm going to start, I'm going to start with the rouge. So on the sheet, I have things like color appearance, blah, 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 you see it on your screen. Um, the, I gave the rouge for color and appearance a 6 out of 10. It's not very clear. Uh, that might, or hopefully will clear up over time. We're going to find out. Um, it's got a great color though. They both have a really nice color. Um, the nose bouquet, it smells like sweeter. It's not, doesn't smell alcoholic, which is good. I mean, it doesn't smell like it's gonna have some burn. I gave it about 12 out of 15. It's pretty good. Um, definitely has, could be better. Uh, the flavor on it was about a 12 out of 15. Had a little bit of smokiness to it. Um, it was smooth, but it does have that tannic, um, feel to it, which affects a little bit of that flavor. It does have some fruity notes to it as well. Um, it retained honey character well. Uh, the finish on it has a little bit of a bite. 
Um, not really something I picked up on the nose, but I got it on the finish. About a seven out of 10. Color or Honey Character Presence was a six out of 10. And that's because, again, it, it retained that Honey Character pretty well, but it didn't, uh, it's being clouded by it's some of other issues. And then the mouthfeel body was eight out of 10. Um, good full body, smooth finish is what I put. Um, so I think it's got a nice full body. It's, it is smooth, it's just that little tannic feel. Um, that does help the body some, but it also detract, detracts away from it some. Now, the K1V1, um, in color and appearance, I gave it an eight out of 10. It's much clearer, has a, has a nice color to it. Um, it's that definitely retained that color of the honey. Um, Solid color and clarity. Nose, bo uh, nose and bouquet was 11 out of 15. It has a good honey aroma and it's slightly fruity. I wasn't as big of a fan of the aroma on the K1V1. I think the Rouge actually did a little bit of a better job in, um, in that world. Flavor, it definitely is more flavorful than the Rouge. It's a 13 out of 15. Um, it's good honey character, good char honey retention. And um, I said dark fruits on this, which I know is not typical for the K1V1 because Generally with the K1, uh, you use it for lighter fruits and it's just kind of interesting. Um, finish, it had a great finish. It's very smooth, very, very smooth. Um, like almost no bite at all, which is really impressive for an 11 day old mead. You would think that there'd be some bite to it. Uh, so it's interesting. Had a, it has a better honey character presence in it than the uh, Rouge. It definitely has more floral and earthy notes to it. Um, like I said, it gets that more tropical fruitiness out of this honey. And the mouthfeel body was an eight out of 10, low, uh, low body, uh, sorry, full body, low flocculation, low bite, and it's not yeasty. And I think that definitely falls into the um, mouthfeel a little bit too when we talk about that tannic flavor. It doesn't feel very tannic. So the total on that one's 57 out of 70, and the total for my, um, for the Rouge was a 52, or sorry, 51 out of 70. Um, so the winner of this shootout, based off of my score sheets, and honestly just my opinion, is the K1V1, um, and because it, it, it did more with the honey character than the actual, uh, than the Rouge did. Now, was the Rouge bad? No, is this thing gonna clear up? Yeah, more than likely, this thing's gonna be pretty clear. And I'm really curious to see how they turn out. So what I'm gonna do from here, I'm gonna take these two things, these two, I'm gonna put them into these half gallon fermenters, or a gla a gla glass jars, goodness. And then we're going to store them away to, um, to age for you know quite some time. My goal and my hope is that they both get better with age and then we will revisit this shootout in a couple months from now and see who the victor is from there. But uh, I, I've really enjoyed this. I have more shootouts coming between other yeasts and I don't wanna just pair um, you know, Lavin products versus Lavin products or Red Stars versus Red Stars. I'm tr gonna try and go across the world with it. So we're gonna get a bunch of different kinds of yeasts and uh, I would love your recommendations down below if you have any for me. But uh, if you wanna see these score sheets and my composite of uh, all of my yeast shootouts, um, I'll put that down in the description um, and hopefully I'll be updating it pretty soon and you'll see kinda of what, who's winning at the time. Uh, we're gonna start facing off some of these against each other in the future, which will be exciting. Then this next part's real easy, you don't need to worry about it because I'm just gonna rack them over into that and then call it good. So. The winner of this shootout, K1, V1, um, not by a lot, but by enough. What, it's a great yeast. I have known that for a long time. It's a very powerful yeast, I think. Um, most people know that. So, thanks for watching this shootout. I'm gonna have more shootouts, more videos in the future, and um, I hope you'll just hit like and subscribe to support the channel, and support the channel by checking out the links as well. Go check out some other videos. Um, I, I need your support, I need your help, because uh, the world of mead is a growing thing, and you can help us grow by making your own mead and by sharing um, videos. So, thank you guys. Uh, see you guys next time for another shootout. See ya.